world is no matter what the situation is uh, the word of God remains the same uh, the promises of God uh, for God to bring you to fulfillment has, been, has, has already been, been done uh, because our God does not lie hallelujah he is not man that will lie Hallelujah. Your friend will lie to you. Your, your brother will lie to you. Your spouse will lie to you. Your parents will lie to you. But God will not lie to you. When he says that wherever you go, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He has never changed. Brethren, I was sitting there while the man of God was praying with us. And one thing that, that attracted me was the fact that he is praying my sermon. Hallelujah. That is what the Spirit of God does. We did not sit and say, okay, this is where we are moving the service on Sunday. We did not sit and say, okay, this is what we're going to pray about. In fact, he didn't even plan to come here and pray today. Hallelujah. It just happened that he came and like, okay, let me pray. Glory to God. But the Word of God just connects with what God gave me to preach. My sermon today, today is trials don't have to stop your destiny. Trials don't have to stop your destiny. What am I saying? I'm saying it may stop your destiny, but that is if you allow it. Amen. That is if you settle for it to stop. Amen. That is if you stop trusting in God. That is when trials will stop your destiny. Hallelujah. Trials will not stop your destiny. Please turn with me to the book of James chapter 1. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me. Say, trials will not stop my destiny. Try, I cannot hear you in faith. Trials will not stop my destiny. Trials will not stop my destiny. Hallelujah. Trials will not stop your destiny. No matter what the enemy has been planting in your head, no matter what the enemy has said so far, I want to let you understand that trials are for good sometimes and most times for a Christian. Amen. Amen. James 1, verse 1 to 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will read, I will read briefly. Amen. Actually, verse 2 to 13. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Amen. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Hallelujah. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask of him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled, amen, as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them. And those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a little flower in the field. The, the hot sun rises and the grass is wither, and little flower droops and fails and falls, and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all of their achievements. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Hallelujah. Amen. After all, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone else. Amen. I feel like the NLT version of this word has just settled the preaching. Amen. Like I said, trials don't have to stop your destiny unless if you allow it to stop. Amen. What are trials? You know, a lot of people go and talk, you talk to people, oh, you know what, I, I haven't seen you for a while. Oh, it's, you know what, I'm going through trials. Amen. But the dictionary definition of trial is a test of the performance, qualities, or suitable of someone or something. Hallelujah. A trial and a test, they are the same. Trials is, let me tell you, you will not go to the next class without going through a test. You will not advance to the next level without trials. Every level of life has a passage. And when you pass through it and you make it triumphantly, then you are in the next stage of your life. Same way we've gone through education from grade one up to wherever you are today. It is because every stage you took a test. You took trials and get to the next level. You passed it so you made it. 
Some of us, we keep repeating the same trials uh, because we have not learned from it. Mm. Brethren, I'm not talking to you today. I'm talking to me. Hallelujah. We have not learned from the situations uh, that dipped us in the trial in the first place. Uh, we have not learned through the test. Uh, but if during that time uh, we are able to learn the lesson that we are supposed to learn, uh, we endure the trial. Hallelujah. We are able to prove that our performance level uh, is high above the situation. Uh, then you have passed the test for the next level. Hallelujah. But when we go through trials, some of us, we forget that it is the Lord that is, the, that is trying to test you because he cannot give you responsibility that he knows you cannot handle. Brethren, he cannot give you a responsibility that you know if I try this brother or this sister, they will fail. But if he knows that if he goes through that trial and he was able to endure and he was able to travel over it, any other situations above this, he will be able to handle. Brethren, it is time to use your trial uh, as a moment of teaching, uh, a moment of learning uh, from your mistakes and moving to the next level. Hallelujah. It is not a moment to give up and allow it to make you fail uh, for your destiny. Hallelujah. It is not a moment to lament. Uh, some of us, we have done trials in the wrong way. Uh, we have gone through our performance test to trials in the wrong way. Uh, we have gone through our endurance test in the wrong way. Uh, I'm talking to me, I said. Hallelujah. When trials come, we lock ourselves in our rooms and cry. Amen. When trials come, instead of going to the Lord that says, ask for wisdom on how to travel over this, ask for wisdom on how you can go through this, instead we sit and mop and cry. Hallelujah. Or if we don't cry, we call our friend that we think we can trust. You know, this is what I'm going to do. Where, where? The next thing the friend does, if they put the phone down, they call somebody's money. They call themselves pastors. Look at them. The trial they are going through is so much. You become the subject of the town. Amen. But what you do with trial, because it is a moment of test for your trial, for your next level. What you do with a situation like that is go to God in prayer. Ask him for wisdom on how to overcome this, says the word of God. Amen. He says, go to the Lord. Hallelujah. He said, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God. If the trial is too strong and you don't know what to do, ask your God for direction. Ask your God for instructions. Hallelujah. Because it is a moment of test, as I said, of the performance, the qualities and suitability of somebody or something. Even my pastor, you're a chemist. You know, before they bring anything out there, it has gone through some tests. Mm. Hallelujah. Chemicals, before they allow anybody close to it, whoever invented it may have put it through some tests. Even aeroplane, my brother is interested in aeroplane. When they fix it, they make sure it goes through some tests to ensure that it will not kill people. The same with cars. You see, in the, in, 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 if you're watching those, those TV programs where they make things, you know that when they make cars, they have these um, robot dummies that they put in there to test if the bag is working properly, the earbag. How they call it? Yeah. Amen. So everything that they do, for it to get approved, there must be a trial. Brethren, why do you want approval without a trial? Hallelujah. Why do you want approval? Test can be something good for you. It can mean that, yes, you have gone through so much, it is time to test your level of performance, your endurance for your next level. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Someone decides that, let me tell you, the test are a lot. This is different. Let me tell you, somebody will decide that today I'm going to punish this woman. I'm going to make sure that I pick a fight with this person. How, you, how, how do you endure that as a Christian? Hey, excuse me. And then you say, ahem, me, one, bam, you start to fight with this person. You have failed the test. The test that, that, that the Lord said that be at peace with all, my, all men. Amen. You have failed the test uh, that as a Christian you should show love to that person. Hallelujah. You have failed the test because the enemy has deliberately used this person uh, to bring you down in, 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 in a moment of quarrels. Hallelujah. You go to work. You have this one person that works in this place that does not want to see your progress. Immediately you enter that work until you leave for that day, they make sure they are on your case. That's trials. How will you endure a situation like that? The government is after you for this or for that. That is trial. How do you endure with that? Hallelujah. Your home is shaking. Your marriage is scattering. Your problems are overflowing. Those are trials. How do you handle them? It's how it will make it not make you fail. Hallelujah. When trials are not make what makes you fail, it's how you handle them. Hallelujah. How you handle trial is what will make you fail. If you use the wisdom of God to handle a trial, brethren, you'll pass and fly with flying colors. 
Hallelujah. You will go through it with flying colors. Uh, somebody in the family have decided they will not give you peace of mind. Uh, how you handle that is how you make the victory. Hallelujah. How you handle that, like my brother was praying just now. He said, Joseph, let me tell you, when Joseph became the emperor or whatever, the prime minister of Egypt, uh, nobody remembered he was a prisoner. Are you, who dare you to come before Joseph and say, hey, Joseph, see Joseph the prisoner, you'll be jailed. You have disrespected an honorable man. Amen. When Joseph was finally placed after all the trials he went through, when he was placed in authority, nobody remembered the trial he went through. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Nobody remembered that, that somebody accused him of rape. Mm -hmm. All those things were swept away. People cannot even approach him with them. Because when God finally exonerates you and puts you in position, you forget the trial days. But those trial days, do you think it was funny for Joseph? Do you think it is funny for to hear your brothers discuss that they want to kill you? How, how hurtful is that? You say, oh, pastor, you're talking because you don't have brothers and sisters. Wherein I do have brothers and sisters. You are my brothers, you are my sisters. Hallelujah. I do have a few family, family members that I, I consider sisters and brothers. But what am I saying? I am saying Joseph was in that situation, in that Peter, or in that situation where his brothers are like, we're going to kill her. If Reuben was not there, he would have been dead. But I said, don't put this man's blood on your head. Let's sell him. Hey, your brothers, your blood brothers, they sold you. Amen. If it is us these days, we'll never forgive them. That day they appear and they are, hey, we have showed them that this Joseph that you wanted to kill, it is me. You guys are going to throw you in prison because you tried to kill me. He lets go of it. It was painful. He cried, but he let go of it. Hallelujah. The trials he went through, if some of us were put through half of it, we will not make it. It will kill our destiny. Hallelujah. When he ended up uh, in Potiphar's house and was accused wrongly, you say, hey God, with all the prayer that I prayed to you, this is the kind of thing that you pay me back with. I don't even want to go to church anymore. Hallelujah. I don't want to pray to God anymore because with all what I've done for God, uh, see how he's paying me. Joseph still continued to be the son of God, the child of God. Amen. He was there, he prayed. They throw him in prison. The reason why I know Joseph did not abandon God uh, because he was still functioning in the gift that God gave to him. Uh, because that was the gift that made that made way for him. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. His dream, his interpretations of dreams uh, was what made the people remember him at, the, at their assigned time. Mm. And from that prison, he became the one he was that the, the brothers came to see. Mm. Hey, don't think that you did wrong, God. Was, uh, it's just that you have to send me ahead of time. Some of us will carry bitterness because of those situations. But he let go of it and became a honorable man. But then some trials will take you to some level. Like when you talk your testimony, people go like, hey, where is that your God? Let me come see that God. Mm. Where is that your God? Let me come follow you to that God. Because the trials are so, that you went through and you succeeded and you were able to overcome, these are testimonies that will bring people to know your God. But how are you handling it right now? Are you on your knees praying or you're getting angry at your pastor? Hallelujah. I don't blame people that are angry at their pastor. Because some pastors have made them feel that they are God. God forbid. Mm. Amen. And the pastor is saying, I'm having all this problem. I'm, come, come on, don't look to me. Come on, I'm looking to God myself. Mm -hmm. I'm only here as a shepherd to do what God has told me to do. I'm a servant. I'm a slave. I only do what God asks me to do. Amen. But even myself, I am flesh. The Bible says, do not trust in man. Hallelujah. Put your trust in God. Even yourself, don't trust in yourself. Put your, do not lean on your own understanding. Lean on the understanding and the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. So when people are saying, oh, I'm going to trials, uh, aka whatever, trials are tests of faith, brethren. Hallelujah. Trials are tests of faith. Hallelujah. Jesus, before he actively started his ministry, Jesus himself, he went to trials. Amen. The Bible says, uh, you know, somebody turn Matthew 4 verse 1 and read it for me. Jesus, our, our, our Lord and our Savior, amen, that we all are after, we all dare to, we all want to see because he has saved us and we are waiting for him, amen. This same Jesus went through trials, hallelujah. This same Jesus went through trials. So if Jesus went through trials, who are you? Who do you think you are? Hallelujah. That you think the enemy will just let you be. Hallelujah. The enemy has to test your faith of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody quick, quickly read for me. My Bible is so new. It's then Jesus was led up Amen. Mm -hmm. by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Jesus was led up by the Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted. You know, sometimes when we need to forget that, that part. The, fa the fact that it was ordained 
that Jesus must be tested. Brother, I want to tell you, no matter what you're going through today, it was ordained that you go through that trials and be strong and endure and, and be if might victorious so that it will become a testimony for you in the, in the kingdom of God. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Amen. It was the purpose of his thing in the wilderness. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, what did Jesus use to overcome that? Uh, he said, why, uh, why are you thinking that if Jesus was tested, you will not be tested and you call yourself a Christian? Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Why do you think you will not be tested? Uh, but by the special of grace of God, Jesus showed us how to deal with these things. Amen. Amen. If you go back to that same chapter, verse 3, Jesus replied, I love this version. He said, the scripture says, Amen. Other version says it is written. Jesus told us that in times of trial, in times of situation, go to the word of God and allow the word of God to shower you blessings to it. See what the scripture says concerning the situation. Hallelujah. That's why you see David was a man after God's heart. One thing I love about David, he was going through his trials, he was going through his situations. He went the trial of the bear, of the lions. The, the, you know, all the psalms, when you read it, you know this man knew how to appreciate God and knew how to, to read the word of God and knew how to understand the things of God. Most of the, the psalms, some of them, you will see that they are quotations in the Bible. Hallelujah, that he was using. Amen. You know, when you read about him, he said, you know, you are, you are my buckler, you are my shield, you are my everything. This man knew the word of God is able to set him free from every, every captivity. Hallelujah. The truth shall set you free. And what is the truth? It's the word of God. Amen. The truth shall set you free. And what is the truth? It is Jesus. Jesus gave us an example of how we can deal with trials. Amen. So when you know the trials are coming, you know you are hidden in Jesus, deep in him, in the shadow of the God, the, he that dwelleth in the shadow of God Almighty, shall abide under the shadow. Hallelujah. When you abide under the shadow of God, when you abide in the word of God, when the enemy comes, they know you are ready to, to respond in those moments of trials. Hallelujah. Brethren, if I say I'm going to go through trial, people that went through trials in the Bible, you will say, yes, we understand. I don't want you to just understand these as stories. I want you to understand these as, as things that will teach you the way to know God and the way to understand the way how God works. Amen. That is why we have the Bible. Hallelujah. But in everything, one, one thing I want to encourage you about is keep trusting in God. Keep trusting in God. Never lose hope on God. Hallelujah. You never lose hope on God. The Bible, I want you to turn with me quickly. And whoever is here, first read Psalm 125 verse 1. We have to put our trust in God. Do not put a trust in yourself. Do not put trust in, 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 in man. Do not put trust in your pastors. Do not put trust in your prophets. Do not put trust in the Babalao. Do not put trust in Juju men. Do not put trust in anything on earth. The Bible as we read, it says only if God is the only person you look up to. Hallelujah. You're not looking left. You're not looking right. You're not expecting your blessing and your victory to come from anybody but, but God. Hallelujah. So read Psalm 125 verse 1 for me, please. Those who put their trust, mm -hmm. those who put trust in the Lord mm -hmm. are like Mount Zion. Like Mount Zion. Which cannot be moved. You cannot be moved. But abides forever. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me that those who put their trust in God, they shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. Why? Because their trust is in God. Their anchor is in Christ. Nothing shall shake them. The Bible says the people that want to, to harm you, they shall gather but they shall not succeed. Why won't they succeed? Because you put your trust in God. So you are not moved. Hallelujah. Like the, bread, the, the, the pastor was praying earlier on and praying about attacks. Uh, you know, when you pray, uh, when, when you wake up in the morning after some, some kind of dreams, you're waiting to see what's going to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. You are Mount Zion. Uh, no matter what the enemy does, uh, you cannot be moved. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, if anybody has lied to you uh, that because you're a Christian, uh, that means you're you are prone to attacks, uh, the person have lied. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Just tell them, even Jesus went through it. But he succeeded. Amen. So all we need to say, do not waver for a person with divided mind. Say, but when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Amen. Your faith is what? In man? No. Your, is your faith in, in, your, in your pastor? No. Is your faith in, in your prophet? No. Your faith in your bishop? No. He said, but be sure that your faith is only in God. Hallelujah. When you ask for wisdom, when you ask for direction, do not allow all the voices uh, that will slow you down. Uh, let me tell you, blind by 
Bartimaeus was a smart man. Uh, he was blind, but he was not stupid. Uh, and let me tell you something. The, way, the only reason uh, he was able to get his deliverance uh, was because he's locked, he locked his ears to those that were telling him, don't shout. This man don't want to hear you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He, uh, he was shouting, Jesus, son of David. But, shh, that man does not want to talk to somebody like you. In the crowd, the man was, I'm just assuming that he was sitting there or standing there because he cannot see. He does not know even what direction he should be shouting. But he knew that his voice will not be there and he will lose out on his salvation. He will lose out on his, on, on his deliverance. Hallelujah. Because Jesus was passing by. He does not know when else he will encounter this Jesus. Do not waste time, brethren. When you hear Jesus, if you have not encountered him, try to do it immediately. Blind Bartimaeus knew that this man goes from town to town. How am I sure that he's going to pass here again? He decided that the voices around him will not stop him from his deliverance. Hallelujah. He shouted until Jesus heard him. Same with the woman with the issue of blood. With all the trials, all the tribulation, all the sickness, all the gossip, all the doctors that said, you have been given up. All the fact that all her life, in those 12 years, she was impure and should not be facing people. The woman ignored everything around her and made up her mind that the only thing I need is Jesus. Hallelujah. In my own version of it, he was well covered for people not to notice she was that woman. Amen. She took all the wrappers that she had that was left, wrapped herself very well so people will not recognize it was he, her, that was piercing through the crowd to go and touch Jesus. He could not talk because if she did, they will know it was her. So she decided by faith, I will just touch him. Just a touch. Some of you, when pastors, when you go to pastors and they just touch you like this, it's like, hey, see me. I don't know what I did to that pastor. She, that pastor hates me. I came to, to the pastor and all the pastor did was touch me. This woman did not do that. Hallelujah. He didn't want, she didn't want no attraction. All she needed was a touch from, the, from Jesus. And that touch, because of faith, he was made whole. Brethren, trials is a test of your faith. Hallelujah. It is not because the enemy is out to kill you. Amen. It is not because your family members have decided that they will not make you make you get freedom. Hallelujah. It is not because they have decided that you are a write-off. Hallelujah. It is not because you have been born with a, with, 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 with a curse upon you not to succeed. It is because God has made you stronger and he understands that he will not give you something that you will not carry. Therefore, he's going to put you through the strongest test. The greater the test, the greater your testimony. And the greater your promotion. Hallelujah. When you go through those things, the Bible says in the book of Job, you will come out as gold. But then let me tell you, the process of making gold, if you see it, you understand that the process is not funny. The trials that you will go through to come out shining, if you look at how gold go through from the rawness of it onto the final product, you'll say, hey, how am I coming out as gold if I'm not ready to go through this process? Amen. It is a process. Trials are process. Hallelujah. Trials are process. When we go through all the Bible verses and we read about people that have gone through trials, one thing that I knew is every, that I know everybody that went through it, enjoyed it and stuck, and stuck with God, in the Bible we are able to see victory. But then I just told you about Joseph. I will tell you about Esther. Hallelujah. This woman has beaten all the odds from an orphan girl who is almost like a slave. To the queen. Amen. And in the midst of all that splendor, the enemy decided to strike. Don't think because I am all here right now, I, you are above the enemy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't be, don't be that naive. Amen. No matter what level you are, trials will come. How you handle them is how you see your victory. Esther, hallelujah, handled her own in prayers. Amen. Even though initially she was afraid, but thank God for a mentor like Mordecai who was able to teach her that if you, if you think you're going to be saved from this, it is well. well. God will find somebody else to save us. Esther was able to get the revelation. And it, she declared a fasting. Amen. Amen. And at the end of it, Esther was able to not only save herself, but all the children of God. Amen. They went through trials, didn't they? They did. Hallelujah. So we go to Ruth. See what Ruth went through. A poor girl got married. Lost the, the, the husband. Lost the brother. Lost everybody around her. With only an old frail woman. Amen. A woman that might have been depressed, discouraged, and everything. A woman, when he looked at her, there was nothing left on Naomi. Even herself, she said, my, my name is now Ma. Bitterness. Hallelujah. All 
all all she had at that time is bitterness glory to God all she was going through at that moment is bitterness glory to God but one thing that I know is the fact that in that situation Ruth was able to understand where her blessings are she was able to get the wisdom from God that I will not give up even though her co-mate or how they call it she left but her in-law her in-law's wife left she said I will die where you die what you eat I will eat the God that you serve. The lady was sharp. She was able to understand that the God of Naomi was no funny God. He said, I will follow you. I will serve the God that you serve. I'm not going to stay here and serve foreign gods. I've been liberated from them. When I got married and was made whole with my husband, I was serving the God of my husband, which is your God. So I'm going to follow you and serve that God. Hallelujah. In that trials, in that situation, in that heart, uh, they took off in their journey. Uh, in a moment where women's world was not making any sense, uh, they were still on their own with no man to protect them. But there was the great man protecting them, the one, the one and only one that can protect you, God Almighty. Hallelujah. So she endured. At the end of the day, uh, she was able to get one of the best men in the town. Hallelujah. Boaz was a rich man. Hey, hallelujah. Ruth was being blessed, hallelujah, because she went through the trials. Do you know how hard it is? She was left in a strange land to feed her old mother-in-law. Hallelujah. To take care of a woman that will not be able to go out to farm. To take care of somebody where they don't even have their own farm. Hallelujah. She was going from farm to farm, finding food. That was trials that she was going through. But in the midst of that trial, Naomi saw her faithfulness and called her and said, go to Boaz and do this and do this and do this. And at the end of the day, those trials paid off. Hallelujah. They did pay off. We go to Daniel. It's a most, we know how Daniel suffered. First of all, Daniel was excelling in a strange land as a ref, as, as actually a captive. I mean, but in that captivity, he was, he was, he was, he was, uh, he was elevated. And in that elevation, envy came in. Trial started coming in until they almost want to kill him, but for the revelation and for the deliverance of God. And why did God intervene in Daniel's situation? Because Daniel did not give up on God. Daniel continued to trust only God. Same with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, if even God, our God will not save us, we will still not worship your God. So they stayed fruit, faithful to their God, even to death. God showed up. I do not know how far you are in your situation, but I want to tell you, trials will not make you die. God will show up as long as you keep trusting in him. Amen. As long as you keep trusting in him alone, he will show up. Hallelujah. He will show up. There is no one that, that, has, that has put their faith and trust in God that have been disappointed. No one. Since the day you were born up to the day, you have never seen the righteous forsaken, says the word. The righteous has never been forsaken, brethren. The only way a righteous can be forsaken is because you have lost righteousness. You have turned your back and you have decided not to serve God anymore. You have made a decision to give up. That is when you, your destiny is aborted with trials. But if you don't give up during trials, if you don't give up during temptations, if you don't give up during that time, you keep down on your knees. You, you take the word of God as your battle axe and say that because my God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because my God sent Jesus to die for me, because my God is able, because my God has never failed, you continue to stand up, you continue to pray, brethren, the enemy will be put to shame again. I'm telling you again because it's not the first time the enemy has been put to shame. God has been defeating him from the day Jesus died on that cross. Hallelujah. Every time he tries, anyone that endures in faith, anyone that endures in the Lord, anyone that endures in prayer, anyone that endures in the word of God, the enemy will be put to shame. And your trials will become a testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. There are steps. Hallelujah. Oh, there are steps. Uh, when we're going through trials, uh, let me tell you, uh, trials uh, and tribulation uh, and perse persecutions. Uh, oh, let me tell you, uh, these things are leading, they are building up to one thing, uh, testimony. Hallelujah. When you persevere in it, in this tribulation, when you decide to persevere, in this trials, when you decide to persevere, in this situation, when you try to persevere, in the Lord, it results to testimony. Hallelujah. That is why I say, your, if it, your trials don't have to stop your destiny. Your trials don't have to stop your destiny. 
Because the only time that will be stopped is when you give up. The time that destinies are stopped with trials is when people commit suicide, they give up. Hallelujah. People just turn their back, say, okay, let depression take my mind over. And back home, you see, you see that depression end up into madness, and then you are not no longer in the right frame of mind. How would you pray? Hallelujah. How would you pray if you had decided to take all of stress and distraction and make them your friend? Hallelujah. How would you pray if you, you know, it's only in this part of the world I came and I had the word depression and distress and stress and stress. Hallelujah. We, we know how we deal with our own. Hallelujah. Even though, like, yes, we have been ignoring it a lot in Africa and some people have gone through it without even knowing they're going through it. But thank God now for technology and, their, and things that, and prayers that's been helping. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, depression, stress is something we nurture and something we should not abort or nurture. Amen. When you wake up in the morning and the enemy shows his ugly face with depression, put your song, your praise song, put your worship song, begin to praise the Lord. Begin to dance like, like you're, you're, you're crazy. The enemy hates craziness. You know, sometimes when that happens, I'm in my own version of it, I'm sure the enemy stands and says, hey, how? How is she dancing? How is she praising God with all what I'm trying to do here? And eventually they notice, the enemy notices that there is no space for him in your, in your, in your, in your environment. So the devil leaves. Hallelujah. And you keep your praise going. Uh, you keep your worship going. Uh, you may not be able to say, God, I want to pray. Uh, but in that moment of time, uh, in that moment of a praise, uh, in that moment of your worship, uh, the enemy knows that you are under the shelter of God. Uh, the enemy knows that you are under the banner of God. Uh, the enemy knows that you are in the protection of God. Uh, because the Bible says our God dwells in worship. Uh, so when you are worshiping, the God that we serve is around you. Uh, and the enemy comes and says, hey, I have failed again. Hallelujah. Because if God dwells in my worship and you decide to show up Satan and I'm worshiping God, even if I can't pray, I am there just said, tell God you were good, you were good and your mercy is forever. The devil is going to be confused. How am I trying to make this woman understand or this man understand that I'm about to attack them and they're telling me that God is good? How is God good? That is when you continue to let the devil know that it is only a season. Hallelujah. It is only a se some trials are seasons. I was telling my brother the other day that I, I there was a project I was doing that because I moved uh, that project because the project was I had this tree that I was looking at uh, from my my room window. And I saw this this tree go through seasons. Amen. You will see the tree very flamboyant uh, in the summer, like really green and all leaves and everything. Uh, by the time fall is coming, the autumn season is coming, uh, you see how it's wither and all the, the, the leaves will fall. Uh, and it will stand there like, a, like an empty dead broom, uh, like there is no life in it anymore. Uh, it doesn't show no sign of life. Uh, and the winter will continue to bother the tree, uh, to bother the tree, uh, and to bother the tree. Uh, and then at the end of all the winter, it begins to bud in the spring. Beautiful buds of flowers begin to grow on it. Life begins to come back. So by the time you know it, it's green again. Brethren, this is an example of how our lives are at times. Every trial is a time or season that will pass away. Amen. Do not end your life because there is a season. Kai, if you end your life, you have ended the season. You have made that trial end your destiny. Hallelujah. That tree uh, has empty. Let me tell you, brother, this tree will lose every leaf. Not even one will remain. Not even one. Some of the branch itself will not even survive it. Amen. But that tree that God understands knows that, yeah, it is only a season. By the time this winter is over, I'm going to board again. I'm going to flourish again. Brother, I'm here to tell you. I do not know if you're in the winter of your life. I do not know if you're in the fall of your life. I do not know if you're in the spring of your life. But I just want you to understand that the sun will shine again. You will smile again. You will laugh again. But only if you hook up to the Lord. Only if you stand in Him. Only if you trust in Him. Hallelujah. Only then you'll be victorious. The enemy has a strategy. Let me tell you. Because I've gone through those strategies myself. When you're in that situation, you wake up in the morning. It brings depression. And then up to, you wake up, let me say, wake up at 7. And 8, 9, you can't even get up here. They are wondering about your situation. And then for some reason, you can't even think about the situation anymore. you just blank. you just weak. You're just heavy. Amen. Even to get up to do anything, you can't. Because you just feel that life is not worth anything. And then what, you, what will happen? Your day is winding up. You have not prayed. 
you have not worshipped. And then it goes as a routine. Up to the time you go to bed. You go to bed sad. You wake up in the And then when you dream, all your dreams are attack. Oh. <laughs> all your dreams is that they're slapping you. They're running after you. They're doing this because of your state of mind. The enemy has made you a play tool now, and he's playing with your emotions, he's playing with your mind, he's playing in your dreams, he's making you wake up in the morning, hey, I've gotten to this point, see my dream. And the routine continues again. And gradually, it's like, it's, like, it's, like you, it's like this was you with God. This is God, this is you. As you do that day one, you are standing here. This is not God leaving you. This is you leaving God. Hallelujah. This is you leaving the presence of God. This is you leaving the shelter of the Most High. This is you on your own part leaving the presence of God. So today you have done it. You are this far. Tomorrow you are this far. Hallelujah. By the time you know it, you have strayed away from the glory of God. You have strayed away from the presence of God. God did not leave you. You left him. Hallelujah. You have left him. Brethren, do not leave your place of shelter. Your place of shelter is your prayer, your worship, your, your word. Hallelujah. Your place of victory is your prayer, your worship, your God. Your prayer every day is, God, give me grace. Give me wisdom to go through this. Give me power to go through this. Let me be able to endure. Let me be able to withstand. Hallelujah. So when the day comes, when you are standing to give your testimony, glory to God. Lives will be transformed and changed. Because when you stand, they say, oh yes, we saw her go through that. We saw him go through that. Our God is faithful. Don't think that trials are because you, God don't love you. Amen. If God will make Jesus go through trials, come on, who does love God love more than the Son? Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, but he went through trials. Hallelujah. So who are you? That don't want to go through trials. Why would you think that I am going through trials because of my sin? God has forgiven your sin and forgotten about it. As long as, long as you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Why are you thinking that, oh, <laughs> it's because, oh, because, eh, it's because of me. It is not you, brethren. Oh, God does not love me. He has abandoned me. Oh, yeah, did, 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 he, did he hate Jesus? No, but Satan went there. Hallelujah. And Jesus showed us the reason why that happened is for him to show you how to deal with situations like that. Amen. Today we're going to spend some time to pray. Amen. Some time to pray. I want you to pray and begin to tell God that my trial is a means of testimony. My trial is my new way to victory. Because without trial, testimonies don't come. Test comes and testimony appears. Because you have passed this test. In the name of Jesus, I will win. In the name of Jesus, I'll be victorious. In the name of Jesus, Hey, my so cotaba ya baba. Rima sakata balibo shaya. Lebe suko sakaza balibo rabosa. Father, my seke take a rebo shaya. Enable me, Lord Jesus. Enable me, Lord Jesus. Enable me, Lord Jesus. Enable me, Lord Jesus. So we stand the trials. So we stand the problems. So we stand the situation. Enable me, Jehovah God. Rabba kotaba leba ya kataba ya. Father, by the authority of the Holy Ghost, uh, as we have gathered here today, uh, we stand against every trial uh, and we say, Lord, Mataremo, uh, each and every one of us uh, that is going through trials, uh, that is going through the tribulations, uh, Lord, we decree uh, victory, Lord. Uh, we decree, Lord Jehovah, endurance, strength, Lord. Uh, we rebuke the spirit of depression uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we terminate uh, the works of darkness uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we say no, uh, not to depression. Not to stress, not to heaviness, and we begin to decree by the authority of the Holy Ghost. Arise, our God, and the Lord shall vindicate those that should be vindicated.